So prior to me getting assaulted <laughs> at 69 Fraser Avenue, I was at 351 Lakeshore Boulevard. And the only commonality that I can see is that they all work for the Toronto Shelter System. And the other commonality is that they f like I felt like when I was there, okay, this is the part where it stops making sense to me because supposedly they're trying to tell me that they're taking their revenge on me, but I didn't do anything to them. That's why it doesn't make sense. And if they're talking about a different shelter resident, like David, um, David actually was the one who stole from me, so I would be the one taking revenge on David, not the other way around. I'm not actually doing that. In fact, if I were to take revenge, it would be an eye for an eye kind of thing. So, because they stole from me, I would steal from them back. But I haven't done that. But they're saying that the reason why they're doing this is because I stole from them, but I haven't stolen anything from them. Which is the crazy part. I think that's why people are calling me crazy, because they were expecting me to take revenge or something. They think it's crazy that I'm not doing anything in retaliation to their unwarranted behavior that's uncalled for I don't know I got a bad feeling about that um another thing I think they were planning on getting me to be stuck in a place so they can actually try to kill me I don't know why they keep saying it's revenge when it's not it's just aggravated assault which is a hate crime. I think they think that me dying will result in their lives getting better because they've stolen so much from me and they're in a lot of shit so they think that if they kill me they get to keep my things and it'll be like I never existed. Yeah, that's literally psychotic. But that doesn't mean that those things don't happen. Like, I know that they happen, but I'm starting to see that there's preventable causes for it. And there's a lot more people involved than is reported on the news. Like, they make it sound like it came out of the blue and nobody knew about it. And oh my god, this person's dead. That's not true. People knew about it. People knew things weren't doing going well. And they, like, forced that person... Is that a group, combined group effort to, like, kill somebody? But why would anybody do that to somebody who hasn't done anything? I don't really get that part. Yeah, so I'm trying to, like, go over this. So, like, at that place... I, on, the only thing I did was to tell Ali this, um, re he's a retarded homeless crackhead, to fuck off because he wouldn't stop hounding me down and he would be making advances towards me and if I didn't respond, everybody in that shelter would have used that as an excuse to har target me and harass me and say that I was being mean or something. But... Ali made it seem like I didn't I was bothering him when in fact it was the other way around I was being nice and the nicer I was the worse Ali got this is something that I've seen frequently with crackheads they respond really badly to 
positive behavior. Weird. But then I was sitting there and I had a feeling that somebody was gonna stab me. But I had a feel like when I got that feeling of like somebody's gonna hit me, it felt like somebody was hitting me with a newspaper. Telling me that it was eye for an eye, but I'm like, I didn't do anything. Which was my entire point. I'm like, I actually said nothing and I didn't do anything. You're the one stealing from me and you're telling me that you're the one taking revenge for you stealing from me. That makes no sense. I think they're making it up. I think they're either involved or the ones that aren't involved are trying to find reasons as to why those things are happening. I don't know. It's just in bad taste to say that. They're clearly mentally unwell. But yeah, I got a feeling that somebody wanted to stab me when I was just like lying down over there charging my phone. And only thing that I remember happening was that I had to go to a drop-in center at one point from 351 Lakeshore to that place and then I had to call Central Intake and they told me to go to drop-in center. Now I don't have to call Central Intake anymore but they're telling me to go to these drop-in centers for food and such. I don't see a way that I can use the drop-in centers or anything like that. So I can't use any of them. And I have a feeling that it might just happen on the street. But they've been stalking me for a while. The only thing that I've noticed when they let up is when they're in a seriously large public setting. So malls and this airport, another airport, um, not in McDonald's or Tim Hortons or any of those places, not on the street or anything like that. Yeah, the police are involved in this. They keep implying that I'm going to go missing, like someone's going to kill me and no one's going to report it. And they're going to be like, oh, we don't know where she went. We don't know what happened, even though there's actually numerous reports of it. I don't know if this is what they do to everybody who leaves the country or is attempting to leave the country. It seems like it to me. I think that's what that is. So anyone who doesn't want to be a part of their cult, they just kill off or something. Yeah, I don't trust this place or the government. But yeah, speaking of which, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Every time I defend myself, they get worse, so they like end up ganging up on me more. So their implication being that I need to just sit there and just take all the abuse that they're giving me, which makes no sense to me. Like, why would I sit there and be okay with the fact that you are saying and doing all these horrible things to me? Obviously, I'm going to not do something about it. And also, yeah, I realize how unlikely this is. That I am a person who has no friends and no family to rely on. No relatives, no nothing. Like, in terms of relations. I can't think of a single person on the planet who is like this. In this situation where this person has no friends and no family. And the worker did mention something about some people have to get their anger out somehow, but you can't use people to get their anger out on. That's what punching bags are for. You can buy those at sporting goods stores. That's why people go work out at their gym. Like, that's inappropriate. I think they're trying to justify it. The fact that they were involved in instigating these types of behaviors. But... That's why I'm like, it doesn't really make sense what they're doing.
I don't think they figured that part out yet. That it's not justifiable. And they think life is like a movie or a video game where things haven't changed. Like, it, they can keep doing bad things over and over again and nothing will change. Like, there's no difference in, like, how things are running and how badly things have gone. They had don't notice it or they're lying about it. Things have gone really bad. <laughs> but, yeah. It's very unlikely that this is going this is a thing like it makes no sense why would a person like me have no friends and no family members to rely on unless this is entirely illegal and a combined effort of more than one person or groups of people rather Anyway, they used to do virgin sacrifices back in the, like, prior to the Middle Ages, when they first had recorded evidence of civilizations. So, like, every time there was a disaster, such as famine or disease or, um, like, hurricane, tornadoes or drought or something, they would sacrifice a virgin in hopes of appeasing the gods. They thought that if they killed a virgin, it would help the gods be happier and then it would stop the famine and the disease and the drought and all that kind of stuff yeah it, it was like the crazy stuff people used to do really really long time ago like in the 5th century 6th century 10th century or something way back when, when like they first invented plumbing 